So is it true about the... going because I'm not sure they had other stuff going on that ran a little late this morning so all right yeah we're good on our side because Kevin had like an event or something yeah <laughs> all right so I appreciate you giving us proposals I wanted to oh sorry I want to make sure we're ready to go we're good okay sounds good okay well, good afternoon. I'm hoping we can make some serious movement today. I know we really took to heart some of the things that you said at the last session, and you'll see them that reflect in our proposals. There's some things we just can't move as much as we'd like to, um, but there's other places I think that we are making, um, I hope, some headway. So if you'll see, I see from your Article 12, you still have that you want the 12-month probation. So if you look on our proposal, what we're offering is 260 regularly scheduled duty days. That is the equivalent of a 12-month contract. So for like, I'm a 12-month employee, I work 260 duty days. So rather than have it 12 months, because you know we know that the officers work those 11 days, but there's months where, you know, where they're only working 11 days in June, 11 days in July. So that's two months where we're really be, we'd be handicapped. So we felt like if, if you want the 12 month, to me in concept, it would be what a 12 month employee would work, which for the district is 260 duty days. So for our payroll system, if you are a 12 month employee, you're not listed as 12 months, you're listed as 260 duty days. Okay, would that compute, I guess, to like 14 months for them or something like that? I think it's about, well, if you, if you do calendar months, I think it is, but see when you, otherwise you're not taking into consideration the fact that there's a week off at Thanksgiving. There's two to three weeks off at, well, it's about two weeks off at Christmas. Um, you know, there's a week off at spring break. There's- That actually comes up to probably more, close to the same or more. No, actually it doesn't. I think it, it's about 14 and a half calendar months. If you were gonna work all 260, well, according to your calendar, let's put it that way. So when we went and counted the school police, we looked at your calendar, it takes it about 14 and a half calendar months but it is the equivalent of a 12 month contract for the district. So we felt that that was a good compromise. We understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, you can't compare it to a, another law enforcement agency where they aren't getting a week at spring break, a week at Thanksgiving, two weeks at Christmas, because right there, that's, you know, that's a whole month right there where they're not working that you would say, okay, you know, that counts for their probation when it really doesn't because they're not physically working. Right. And then you take into consideration, you know, all the other, school holidays that we have that maybe other law enforcement agencies don't, um, but also with the June and July months where it's limited. So we felt like this was as close as we could come to a compromise. It is the district's version of a 12 month is 260 regular duty days. Okay, but teachers are 12 months and they have the same breaks and- They are not 12 month employees. They are 196 duty day teacher uh, employees. They are not 12 months. But their contract doesn't say their probation is 12 months? 12 That's by months. statute, it's not by contract. I have a question. And it's the first full um, school year that they work. And it's um, under Florida statutes. We don't have really any control over that. Technically right now we, we work 199 days a year. So if you're adding 61 extra days of duty, how does that come out to 14 months? In a 12 month calendar year, we work 199. We went, and, we went and counted. We took the days and counted to get to 260. Did you count like non-contract uh, days and no, stuff No, we like did that? not. So, all right, so that comes Because up. those are non-contract days. Those are not regularly scheduled work day. So this, well, so what I'm trying to tell you is right now in a 12 month period, we work 199 days a year. If you add 61 more- Are you more, saying what, 199? 199 duty days that we are actually present at work. You add another 61 to that, and that comes out to more than 18 months. 
because it's 12 months for, for us to work 199, and now you're adding 60, 61 more appearances in uniform to get off probation. So originally they had it at 18, now they're, they're actually pushing it up. That, so, that Alex, that's just not true. Uh, what I would ask you to do is get the school district, the school police calendar, and count the days that are on there, because that's what we did. We counted the days. I worked with Ms. Powell over in school police, and we, we counted out, okay, what does that look like on the calendar? It's not 18 months. It is a shorter period of time. This is our compromise. This is about negotiations of trying to meet you at halfway. For the district, what we consider to be a 12-month contract is 260 duty days. I believe you're trying to compromise. I'm not saying that. No, I, I just think the math is wrong. No, we appreciate you moving somewhat. He's just well, saying. Well, he's, he's saying that we're trying to slide a hand here that it's now more than no, 18 months. No, I'm saying months. the math is wrong. I no, believe the math saying, is wrong. He just said that he just thinks it's 199 duty days instead of 260. Well, but the 199 days, you guys are actually 206, I believe, right now. So we actually work 199. Right, you're physically scheduled to work okay. 199. Agreed. And that's in a 12-month calendar. That's 12 months right there. So now you add 61 extra work days. We don't work 30 days a month. Correct. You're so trying you're adding to an extra two and a half, maybe three more months to the 12, which comes out to 15. It comes out to 12 and three more, probably about 15, 16 months. All right, so it is. it does sound like it's a month or two shorter. Right. Than it's, it's less than the 18 months, but it is what we consider to be a year contract is 260 duty days. Now, if you guys were working the schedule like the people here at this table work, that's a, that's a calendar year. But but for you guys, it's not because of the way, you know, the You're way your breaks work. trying to cut the work. time off, basically, the breaks and things right, like Right, because to say it's a 12-month calendar, it really isn't true if you're going to do a 12 month based on the calendar because you have a full month off during the year for those breaks where you're not working. Now, you may get called in and it's overtime or whatever, but it's those are non-contract days or whatever they calculate those at. But the standard employee, you're really you're not working a full month there, so that's 11 months and then you start taking away, you know, the 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 teacher planning days and the other holidays that are built in that your officers may not be working. You're getting far less. They're, they're really not here a full 12 months. So that's why we're asking for the 260 duty days. In a, in a standard agency, if you're working, and we'll just go on one PDSO, it's 181 days, and with 30 days of vacation time, and then PDOs, you're down to about 150 days. So you're talking 15 days a month from, from a, a large agency or another agency. Well, you know, I also know that they're not working eight hour shifts, though. From what I understand, they, right? Some of them. So we're talking about how many times you have to put on a uniform to come to work. It depends what it's, unit. Yeah, you're but it's, in it's appearances. Like that. That's that's how that's how our appearances are are eight hours. Their appearances are maybe eleven and a half or twelve hours. It depends yeah. where you're right. placed. So, so and, and I understand that. I'm just saying for the district, if you want to talk, if we're going to say appearances, like I put in 260 appearances. Now I get I accrue vacation, I accrue sick, and I accrue personal. You know, because that's per statute and per policy. But for the most part, our employees who are 12 months at work, 260 duty days. Okay, we appreciate you, you know, moving a little bit. I'd like to look at the calendar myself. So, okay. and then we'll get back to you. All right. Okay, so going into 17, Article 17. Um, I appreciate, I see that you've got 17B, you've got the properly documented. That's great, because we both have that. We changed our proposal. You'll see um, we understood what you were saying about the rolling it over and so that you could have a constant bank of 24 hours. So that's why we left the regular language, the recurring maximum, because that's what we have now. And we kept it at 24. Um, and then, which may be replenished, didn't make sense. I'd rather leave it the language we have, the annual recurring maximum, because that's what the officer are used to. They understand, okay, you can just roll it over. We've agreed. Fine, you can keep uh, up to 24 hours, but at the end of the end of the contract or at the end of the, the calendar year, you know, whatever gets paid out would be capped at 24, because that's really what we're talking about is the payout. And that I'm glad I now. understood that last time. So that's I, what it is now. Right, that's what that's what you're doing now. So we have that recurring maximum. We're not changing. It's not limited to 9004. Um, I see that you added may not be earned for work under a lease. We also changed um, at your request. Put in reasonable. Um, 
you know, we have language about the requirements further down. I see you added it and see that they would be subject to requirements that seven days in advance, we've added that in and I just, further down. Yeah, because that's what they do now. So I was just trying to match the practice. Right, so in 10, or so, in, sorry, yeah. what, 17, oh, go ahead. For the maximum for 24, so that's just, you guys wanna keep it how it works now. So Correct. when you guys use time, you can go back up to 24. That's how it works now. But All we're doing is changing the number. We're not changing any of the other language related to how they accrue it. Well, we have 16 now, and we're going to move it to 24. Yeah, right. so up to eight hours. Yeah. So why not re remove the word annual? Because that's going to be confusing later on. And well, I think it's. I don't think it is confusing. I think the word annual is. I don't want them to think that it rolls over into the next year. So at the end of the year, it gets paid out because that's well, the way it happens now. But it, and then it starts all over again. So I wouldn't want anybody to think that in August, whatever that date is, they pay it out, that you would then be able to roll over if you had 24 hours sitting in the bank then, that you'd be able to have the option to roll it over into the next year. It gets paid out. Okay. I'm just saying because in the beginning of this contract negotiations, your side was very confused with that word annual, thinking that it couldn't be reoccurring. Right, but they, so she, she's Standard saying that right. she gets it now. Yeah. Okay. Right, we're leaving the language as status quo. We're just changing that, the number, so that it would be continuing. You just wanted to be clear that they get paid out. Correct. At the end of it. And that's, year. so going into 17.1D, we added in the uh, 10 hours per day so that you could use a maximum of eight hours per day or um, 10 hours per day when the district is operating on a compressed work week. And compressed work week is the four tens that we do, because you had asked for that, so we added that in there. Um, we added the language would be the reasonable discretion as per your request. We had arbitrary and capricious. You wanted reasonable, we gave you reasonable. And um, based on the necessity to maintain the efficient operations of the school district, so that we kind of defined what reasonable is a little bit there, because okay. um, it's based on the necessity in um, our operations. So then going into E, they would meet with their supervisors um, quarterly. So I, I just thought that was a little confusing, but is that, because I don't know, is that how you all do it now? Or how do you? Which are you talking I'm, about? I'm not sure they do it now. I think they come to their officer when, their supervisor when they want to use it, and they say, okay, I need, you know, it's a week from now, I need to use it for this doctor's appointment or whatever. We wanted them to, to schedule it out quarterly um, so that, where are you getting quarterly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we had talked about before that we wanted them to meet quarterly so that there's a plan, so that we can have coverage. When it's just like the one week, one week, and you'll see we've got some language further in here about exceptions, but um, when it's just a week at a, you know, one week at an advance, we may not be able to get the coverage that we need for the school. So we'd appreciate if we met with them quarterly. And obviously, if something changes, We'd expect our supervisors to be flexible. Let's say that I planned a vacation. I know people here had planned vacations during, you know, for this year, planned weddings, all that kind of stuff, and thinking COVID was going to be gone, and then it wasn't, so all that stuff got canceled, so they could pull that back. Um, but we'd want them to be quarterly and just go over their supervisor, have a check-in, and say, look, I've got 24 hours. When do you think I can use it? Oh, this would be a good time to use it, or this would, so that they could then plan more efficiently to have coverage. Okay, I, I understand that. I'm just a little worried that it's going to conflict with the week, so I'll probably have to talk to them about what they think about that. All right. So then, with the uh, week, quarterly, because it's really like you have to schedule it then just quarterly instead of the week. Right. So. But but the reason why we have to give notice within a week because if something changes, right, the quarterly is to give us advance notice when you can. It's a planning purpose to plan for coverage, right? But if things happen, like suddenly your child gets sick at college and you need to go pick them up or need to you know, have somebody who's sick, a family member that's sick in New York or whatever, and you need to get up there, you wanna take your comp time to do it, if you gave them a week's notice, or in case of an emergency, the supervisors would be able to work with you on that. We're just trying to put in, put in some language so that there is the ability to plan. We understand that things happen that um, officers may need to use it unexpectedly, and we'd want that flexibility for our officers, but we do need to be able to plan if it's something that the officers can plan out in advance. Okay. So on, we added 17.1F, and this is, because this is very important, um, the comp time cannot be scheduled or used on any day when training is scheduled to take place without prior written approval from the chief of police. 
So we're taking it in consideration that, like I said, emergencies can happen, but you've got to get clearance from the chief to use comp time during training, because it's very important that our officers are here. Um, you know, with a limited number of days, you guys make appearances, and all the trainings that are being pushed down from the state and, and part of your certifications that we have to have, it just makes it really difficult if the officers are taking comp time during training. Right, I don't think we have an issue with that, because okay. I and included similar language in our proposal. Oh, okay. And then I separated out in G that comp time may also not be scheduled or utilized on any day, and this is before or after the holiday for the breaks. But I gave you some exceptions because, again, I, I listened to, to Mr. L Officer Lynch about the medical procedure right before Thanksgiving. It made sense to us. So what we did was, you, you know, you can't use it before then, but there are exceptions. If you have a medical emergency or a planned medical procedure, if you have... Um, need to extend a properly authorized bereavement leave. So let's say somebody in your family has passed away, you want to use comp time and it just happens to be near a holiday, we want you to be able to do that. Um, to observe a religious day of the employee's faith, because um, I'm thinking what, um, we had Tuesday off, so if, you know, for some of the Jewish holidays for the Orthodox faith, they are not two days, it's three, so they could have taken the Wednesday off as well, um, so that, you know, we want officers to be able to do that and upon prior written approval from the chief of police and or his designee. So if it is some other emergency that doesn't fit within these exceptions, you know, if you talk to the chief of police or the designee, then maybe an exception can be made for use around the holidays. Okay, I think that we may have an issue with that because it's kind of like preventing them taking an extended break, you know, if they have the time and you guys have coverage. Well, the, the issue is whether we have coverage or not. So that's why we added in that number four, so that if, if it is that, you know, no one else is taking the, the time right after the Thanksgiving break off, because we get a full week off now, and somebody wants to take that next Monday and Tuesday off, or the Thursday and Friday before, then they can go to the chief and explain the circumstances to get an exception. So we do have that language in there. Okay, we'll talk Which about is, But, you know, if you, with any employer, any day before a holiday is always pretty tough. Like, we, our sub rate goes up really high on Fridays, and it goes up really high the day before or after, after a holiday. So we just want to get a little protection so we have coverage for our students. Okay. Uh, the next change we made was in 17.3, and you had asked, instead of adequate notice, it'd be reasonable. Um, you know, you had it defined as 72 hours. I, I think we don't need to put a time on that. I think that kind of may limit uh, both the officers and um, the, the, the operations because there are times where maybe we have to make a, a quick pivot. Um, perhaps somebody quit and we have to, to change some assignments immediately because we need coverage at this particular school or, and I, I wouldn't think of that as an emergency um, because to me, emergencies are something different, but if, if we have to do some quick pivots where maybe we have a lot of officers who are sick and we need coverage over here instead of over there, we may not be able to give 72 hours notice, and i don't not sure that it would be considered to be an emergency. Okay. We have the same language you do about it. It doesn't limit or alter the required notice for involuntary transfer. Um, we, we looked at your 17.5 about the on-call status. And at this point, you know, our, our belief is that it is all voluntary. And so even the detectives who have maybe on call, they have the option to opt out. If they say, I can't, I can't be on call, um, then we've taken them off the on call list. So we just don't feel that that is something that, um, that's necessary at this point. The officers have a lot of flexibility of, of deciding whether they wanna be on call or not. Um, in 17.6, we have the same changes that you do. Can I go back to 17.3 for sure. a second here? On, on, uh, when, when we're talking about um, change in hours. We're, not, uh, we're changing duty assignments. We're not talking about um, working, uh, say, a, a regular work day for us is 8 to 4, 7 to 3. We're, I, I think this was more or less we were talking about if we were now going to working on Saturday and Sundays, you know, working from four to 12 instead. I think it would be both. Yeah. Yeah, but how frequently has that actually no, occurred? No, no, and I, and that's what right? I'm saying, but it's, and I, okay. It, it's not something that we've done, and you'll see like we, we've gone with your definition of day, so it's not something we'd have to, there are other sections of the contract that protect you there as well. Um, 
so that's why we just we didn't go with the notice. And I, I just think sometimes, you know, we need more flexibility given what what your job is and what we need coverage for. Um, we may need to have some flexibility. There were 70. I think my understanding is they're pretty reasonable about it now. Um, but to put a time frame in there, 72 hours, sets an expectation that it'll always be 72, and I don't know that we can we can do that. Well, what's the what's the define what reasonable means? So if, if so, if they decide to tell you a 20, you know, a half hour, an hour before your tour ends, that you have to stay an extra four hours for something, they, you know, well, that would be that would be overtime, and that's not really changing your work hours. It's only yeah, it's like only overtime if you have the 40 hour work week. Right, but it's but that's additional. It, that's covered in a different part of the contract. Like, this is about like changing your regular hours of work. It's just to change your regular hours of work, except for when emergency exists. Yeah, Why that's like it? a schedule versus a mandate. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. So, let's see, going on to the next page. Our next changes are in 17.10. We changed our language so it's school, sector, zone, and then district wide. We took out those non school based um, officers, like you asked. Um, so, we have that language in there. Okay, and we added um, language similar to yours. I was just wondering how many times that actually occurs where you guys have call outs before these types of things. Like, is that a, is it's, that a regular It's really issue? been happening for football games more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, if, if someone signs up and then they just call out. We've had situations, and AC Weiner can speak to it. We had one a couple weeks ago where we had a lot of people who called out. And we had to scramble to get coverage for a football game. Okay. Does that happen a lot, or? More often than we prefer. So it's not, it's you need not, to turn it on. It's not extreme. Thank you. It's not an extreme issue, but it happens more often. The challenge is that when that happens, we don't have a lot of time to figure out who's going to go and cover it, and we don't want to have to co uh, cancel events because we don't have coverage. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So in um, 17.12, you have this language in here about we're going to charge the schools and stuff. We don't have a mechanism right now to be able to do that. But what the language we added is if it is canceled, then the officer would go to their supervisor. The supervisor would then would contact the school site for resolution. Because there are so many different variables of whether their lease has been paid or not been paid, whether this is a school event or not a school event. This also gives us an opportunity to start collecting data on this to find out exactly how much time. If you would like, we could even add language in here that would say that we would discuss it maybe a year from now, maybe not the next round of bargaining because you go right into the next round, but for the next school year so that school police can actually collect the data to determine is this really a problem? Because if it is, we need to resolve it. But if, it's, if it happens, like you said, if it happens one time, that's too many. But we want to figure out what's the problem we're really trying to solve and what's the best way to do that. You know, is, is the best way to do that to create some kind of penalty to the school that would then be given to the officer? Would it be that the school then pays the officer directly? Would it be that the, the, the school police bills the, the school? We don't have a mechanism in place right now to do that. Um, so what we want to do is to study this for at least a year and see, okay, how many times is this happening? Because if it is a problem, it is a problem. We need to fix it. Right. I can send you the data from the poll that we did. It wasn't an often occurrence, but it does happen. Right. So I don't know if we can flush that out more. Of what yeah, a resolution. You had, you had shared that with us, but we preferred instead of just a poll, a random sampling of officers to get a true measure of what it looks like from the school sites so that we can find out, because we also need to know not just how often does it happen, but why is it happening? Is it that the lessee is canceling at the last minute? Or is it that the school is not communicating with the officers? Because that's a different problem that we need to solve. I have, uh, I got to receive the call yesterday from an officer that was, uh, he's a school officer, so he works at that school and he had a volleyball game scheduled to work. He showed up at the volleyball game yesterday and he called me up. He says, there's nobody here. They must have canceled it and they didn't tell me anything. So, okay. And that was the school. So when you're, when you're limiting it now to contractors, you're, just, you're, you're, you're pretty much saying, okay, so if a contractor messes up, we're going we're gonna to get you your money. But if we mess up, 
you know, you're out of luck. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't understand, I don't quite know if we understand, one, the scope of the problem, and two, what really is the problem? Is the problem that the school's not notifying the officers, or is it that the, like in that case, it's obvious the school's not, offer, is not informing the officer. But in other cases, I understand it, it's leases, that it's the lessee canceled at the last minute, or they're not gonna hold this event or that event. We just need to understand the scope of the problem before we just you know, throw money at it. Because, if it's the you know, lease, that's, though, I would think that there's some mechanism in that contract, you know, because they can't just see. I think that's a, they can't just breach the, the mechanism in the lease. Itself. Right, and which, as I said, is something that we have to build into capacity because of the way the leases are done. Because I really did talk to Chris Garrison to find out, like, do all the leases get signed like in July and then they move forward? Because then we can fix those as they get signed. But that's not the way they happen. They're all intermittent throughout the year. Some of them are more than one year long. So we need to get we need to get a longer runway than just say we're going to fix it in the contract now. Because again, this is also retroactive to January. So this would require us to then go back and try and figure that out. And we don't have a mechanism to do that. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't seem to understand that how the con how the how the contractor or the leasee is responsible for notifying the officer that they cancel. They should be. So, but I don't, I don't think that's in the lease. It's the that's, school, it's not the leasee that okay. notifies the officer. But if the, the lessee is the one that's canceling at the last minute, the school may not have an opportunity to then call the officer because if they find out, you know, they're opening the gate at nine o'clock and they have the gates open, the custodians, because they have custodial staff there too, ready to work that lease. Um, let's say it's for a church, the church suddenly pulled out of the lease or canceled at the last minute. Um, if the school wasn't notified, Right, you know, then why are we going to punish the school and bill them for something that was out of their control? So that's well, what I'm that, trying that to understand. I, I've done in the past, but I just let, I, I don't want even worry about it. I, I bill them anyway and let the school deal with the issue. I just I there know. has which to be which is why the language we have in here that we're suggesting right now. One, it's going to allow us to collect data, and two, it's allow your supervisor will know that they're supposed to the officer is supposed to tell the supervisor then the supervisor contacts the school and says, what are we gonna do about this? I just find it hard to believe, like the lease agreement has to have something, they can't just cancel on the school last minute, and there'd be no repercussion, yeah. so. And it's the school that's, that's I just think, well, we can get you copies of the leases. I mean, you know, we, we have hundreds of them. Yeah, they need to be paid. I just think this resolution, like it means nothing if they don't get paid for. Uh, well, anybody, and, what about, was there an issue with the school not paying the officer for the? This happened last oh, night, so I told the officer, to tell you supervisor and put in for the three hours. So we'll see. Okay. Um, we just would like, we don't want to just throw money at a problem that we can maybe fix another way. But I don't, uh, because really it's not, a, you know, for the officer to me, I don't think it's about the money, it's about the inconvenience. I mean, they, they've had to go and show up someplace where they, like you've told us before, they can't go out to dinner, they can't go to the movies, whatever, they have to cancel plans to go do this event, and then it gets canceled. You know, giving the officer money is a nice thing to do, but it doesn't get them their time back. And so in my mind, I want to solve what that problem is. Right. I want to fix that problem and then have a mechanism that if even if we try a fix and it doesn't work, then the officer gets paid. But we're not prepared to do that right now because I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure, one, how frequently it happens and then why it's happening. So we could put in language here that we would be a mandatory reopener that wouldn't count against or however, whatever language you wanted, that we could talk about it, not for the, the round of bargaining that would be for 22, but for 23 because 22 is gonna happen before, probably, it may happen before we even get this one resolved. I just think, I mean, they're working, they're showing up, they, they'll never get their time back, but they're still working, they're showing up for something they signed up for, and you know, there has to be some mechanism in the lease, whatever it is, but they need to get right, paid. But what I'm, yeah, what I'm, can we see a lease though, and maybe, maybe we're, <coughs> we're, on we're barking up a wrong tree here, maybe it's already in the lease. We just don't know it. We can we can have um, Chris Garrison get you copies of sample leases. I don't know if the schools. And that's the other thing. I don't know if the schools have the authority to alter those or not. Um, I don't well, think the they do. Assign, they're but, the ones assigning the actual leases for them. The night school usually. <coughs> correct. Is we the have one. we have a department here that works le that does leasing though, and they have sample contracts. And that's what I'm not clear because if the school can alter it. I can't get you a copy of every lease we no, have. No, 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 I don't mean, well, I'm, I, maybe I'm, mis whatever is in the con currently in the, written in the contract now is what I think we, we just like to like see. Like what, what happened yesterday, Alex? What school was that? 
I that wouldn't be a lease, though. That's just that's at the a school. school function. Okay. Um, there's a standard lease on the on the district website. Okay. If you go to dockets, and there's no there's no um, where uh, I sent it to you. The, the lease. I'll Did pull I? it up. No, while I go. <laughs> now, this the standards that are in the lease that cannot be. It, it says it on the on the district lease. These are standard things you cannot deviate from. Okay. The cost of an officer, the cost of a custodian, the cost of an IT person, okay? The rest that they can, they can vary from is what they charge the lease. If it's a government agency or another school or something, they could charge a less amount. Correct. For the so is, since you have it up there, is there language in there about if they cancel, if there's a fee that they it, pay? I will pull it up. Okay. I believe, the there, I believe the meantime, there is. Alex, if you do me a favor, whoever that officer is from yesterday, can you send an email to me with his name so I can track that to make sure it gets resolved? I will. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is I'm also <coughs> leading a, a project to automate the extra duty workflow. So part of that effort will be an automated notification on cancellations so that the officer will be getting an automated cancellation. So I think if we take that year to ga gather the data and also we'll be putting in some, um, some automated solutions, I think it should help get to the point we want to be. Okay, I think we'll still have to flesh out the resolution process a little more, but I, I'd like to look at whatever well, Alex I just is. think as long as we, we do, somebody just basically says that we can just put it into there just temporarily while we're waiting to actually is, is that you will be compensated somehow. Yeah, but put, you, once you put it in here, it's not temporary. No, I, that, so that's I that's the we, piece, we'll so. It at the next contract. Well, it'd have to, the only way I'd be comfortable with it, and I don't know that we, one, that we have, the funds necessary because I'm not sure, like I said, we're not sure how frequently this happens. I know you have your poll data, but I, I need to know specifically from the schools, like how many times is that happening? How many times has that been approved? I think if we have this language, um, you know, we can start collecting data and we can put language in here that it is a mandatory subject of bargaining for the 2023 contract. It gives us a year to look at this data and figure out and, and start using the, the program that he has and see if it resolves the issue. I do, just do they have to pay a deposit or anything before on the, that lease? Does yeah. it say, Alex? I'm going to pull it up. I'm it's not a resolution, it. though. It's just time to, I get, it's great you're going to collect data, but it does happen. So they do need an actual resolution, not just data. So I think, you know, it's going to have to be a little bit more than that. If, I mean, if they're, if they're collecting the deposit, they're collecting some kind of funds prior to the event taking place. And there's the money anyway. But it's not it's occurring at all of them. It's like a volleyball game. They're not collecting no, no, funds. No, that's a school. That, that's so that's, a, that's, why, a, that's why it has to be a resolution because there's so yeah. many different variables here. If it's, a, if it's one of our, our partners, it's maybe like the Boy Scouts or Boys and Girls Club that we're charging maybe like a dollar, um, you know, for that, that event or whatever they're doing because we do do those kind of things. We also do that. I think we have to do that for some charter schools even. Um, you know, the school is not going to have money from a lease to pay for that. Additionally, you know, if it's a school situation, if it's a volleyball game or something that the school funded, it's going to have a different resolution. And that's why we left it kind of loose. We expect, like you've heard from AC Weiner, that if it's supervisor, and we could add that in here, if the supervisor doesn't, um, if the resolution isn't to the satisfaction of the officer, that they can appeal it to the chief or his designee or the AC. If, we're, if it's a boys oh. or one of our partners, though, who, where are we getting the funds from? That, I'm, I'm just place. I'm just throwing no, it out here because I'm not a lease. I'm not the yeah. lease person. So, if, so. If, but if we're getting it, we're that's coming from either nine zero zero four, which is school police, or it could or be something, school, or it could be the school. An agreement. So then, then we just need to worry about the school end of it. If it's a partner, that's not an issue. Then it's a school or, or nine zero zero four. So I just uh, the yeah. reason. So we can add we can add language in here. I just don't think that it's it's appropriate to say we're going to pay the officer for three hours. Um, you know, particularly let's say it was only a, a half hour event. Um, I get that they had to come there and be there and then leave, but. I think it has so many variables to it. That's why I think it needs resolution rather than this is what you're going to automatically get. I guess though, when it's something in comparison or just to, to say if that officer didn't show up for a detail without giving notice, he, he's, he's, disciplined. he's disciplined or he could be disciplined. If it's less than so three I hours, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they'd be happy with accepting pay for the actual time that the event would have been for if it's less than three hours. But well, I, I think there's, it's just got to be a one, you know, <coughs> something to, to offset it 
temporarily until we decide what the permanent thing is going to be, if, if nothing else. Didn't you guys say that uh, the number of times it happened in the last year was how many? It's very minimal. So yeah. why, don't, why don't you just make sure that I'll take it personally for issues that happen, send it to me, and I will track it down, and I will find out, first of all, if we can get full restitution for the officer, and if not, what the, what the true core, root cause of the issue is, and we'll work toward fixing it. I don't think anybody here in the room wants an officer to have to go to a scheduled detail that was canceled. He wasn't notified, and he should be out of pocket for that. We, we need to figure well, out what's going on. I think that the school can on. afford to pay, I mean, three uh, hours. You're making month. an assumption that schools can afford to pay. I mean, it, some of them can, some of them cannot. Um, so we, it's not like we're not a for-profit. We, we can't even raise our own millage for our own money. We're at the behest of the state and what they give us. So, you know, we're trying to do the best we can with the funds that we're being given. Um, so it's not like the school can just pay this out. 2023 so is very far off, so I don't know if that will be enough, but. All right, we'll work on it. Okay. When I find it, I'll send it to you. All right, 17.15, that's the joint committee. I think we have the same language on there. Yeah, I just, it's very similar. Okay. Okay, yeah, so they're both at 2022 now. Yep. All right, so then um, the salary on the dual career ladder. Um, I'm looking at your language here since we just got it. Uh, it should be about the same. I just said that it's, I think, a mandatory topic of bargaining that will be negotiated prior to implementation. I think, I think I could agree to that, but it would be a subject to impact bargaining, not mandatory subject of bargaining. Have it, you know, however, any change in this program is subject to impact bargaining. Well, it deals with their pay, so. Correct, but it would be subject to impact bargaining because so that's why I would I would use that language. It's, it's similar, except impact bargaining, you're going to get it now. Mandatory bargaining is next time we reopen, we're going to talk about it. I'll talk to the guys. Okay. But I think we can agree to that as long as it's, you know, subject to impact bargaining. Because impact bargaining is the same thing. It has the status quo while we're working through it. Um, I'm... The, as amended from time to time just didn't seem to make sense to me because we have it spelled out in here. Um, when we have in this piece as amended from time to time, it, it didn't quite make sense to me why we would put that language in there when we were very specific as to what those maximum payments would be. Well, I think that we have as amended from time to time in other places, but I can talk to them and yeah, it, that may not be a we big We have deal. it in the section for the Officer's Bill of Rights that we signed. We have that language in there, but that's a little different on how it's, um, those are the officer's rights versus, and I'm probably not going to be clear on this, but this is more of these, money. the incentive we give, the salary incentive money we're permitted to do through statute. Here's the statute that says it, but here's the incentive money that we've agreed to for what things. If you put amended from time to time here and the statute changed and included, you know, some other new cha new um, educational requirement or some, you know, whatever training or excluded something here, then suddenly we would have to come back and negotiate and take something out or put something new back in. I think that that's something that can then wait until the next round of bargaining if we're going to do something in that section. That was my only concern. I, f I found the, the at least part thing. It's on the district website. Let's just, let's keep going and then we can caucus. All right, and on the assignment pay, um, you had the firearm trainer and defensive tactics trainer. We really can't go ahead and do that only because they're not the only trainers we have. We have training in vital techniques. We have training in first aid. We have diversity training. There's a whole um, cohort or whatever of of different trainings that the that we're providing the officers and I don't want to just single out certain ones we you know all our officers we have a lot of training that occurs and to single out those two seemed a little inappropriate uh, for the canine caretaker handler section we're staying with our position because when we did ran the numbers and I don't know if you have this is calculated the $15 per hour for an hour and a half per day. 
that's $157.50 a week. Over the course of a year, that's $8,190 per dog. And what you're asking for is far in excess of that, depending upon the officer, because you're looking at their hourly rate. The district already pays for the food, they pay for the vet bills. Um, you know, this is what you're getting. These officers that do the canine are going to get a $5,390 increase per dog. So I understand from one of our conversations that there's somebody who has two dogs. They're going to walk home with $10,000 more than they had last year. But the, the amount per year is $8,190. That's what we're offering them at that $15 an hour. And I check to make sure, you know, this doesn't include their food. It doesn't include the vet bills. This is about care and maintenance of an animal. Um, it would seem to be inappropriate to use their hourly rate. Particularly, we have one canine officer who makes in excess of $40 an hour. So at time and a half, you're looking at $60 an hour to care and maintain a dog. And that's, you know, 52 weeks a year. We feel that the amount that we're offering... Um, satisfies any requirement of law above and beyond what we need to do. Um, we felt that this was a fair amount to give, and we wanted to make sure you understood exactly how much money we're offering those officers. Yeah, we understand, but under the FLSA, it's actual hours worked, and I don't feel comfortable, and, and I talked to a lot of the canine guys, and they don't, they didn't take kindly to treating it as, you know, a lesser responsibility than their normal everyday job because you could have any Joe Schmo take care of the dog then, but it's not. It's part of their law enforcement duties. It should be included in their regular pay. Well, if we took the amount that you're offering, it becomes cost prohibitive, and it would be cheaper for us to just call in dogs from another unit. We'd like to keep our canines and we feel that this is a fair offer that we can give without having to disband the program. Let me ask you also, is, is the, uh, their regular $2,800 is included? Yeah, in that 8,000, okay. so right, so cost, it's, uh, right, it's 5,000, well, right now it's five, it would, it, well, hold on. It's the $2,800 per dog right per now, dog. right? So, so with, the, with the increase, it would be $8,190 per dog, which is a net increase to the officer personally from what they made, let's say, last year to this year of $5,390. So are you still planning on grandfathering the guys in with more than one dog? Yes. Okay. I took language from, this is the same or similar language from Martin County Sheriff's Office, and I said 45 minutes per dog, and then if they have two dogs, that would reach the 1.5 hours, and then we took out the canine trainer and left it as the 2,800 flat fee, because that really should be done when they're at work instead of at home time. And I don't know, do they get paid right now for when they take the dog to the vet and stuff like that, time and a half? I, I can't answer that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. But then they're also boarding the dog at their home, so that's mm -hmm. that's another. Chief, do you know if they get paid? For I don't know offhand. Did I know we guys? make every attempt to do it during duty hours. Okay. You all just did a poll on how much time they spend at home Right, I got that from uh, Major, Major Baxter. Major Baxter, after communicating with the uh, members of the unit. I think there's five officers that are involved in the canine program. I believe so. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to him some more, but I, I disagree that it's a different type of work, so. Well, we feel that we're being um, more than fair on that. That's, an, that's a huge increase. Is this still a package? We're, st we're working on it. I mean, you know, we're giving, a, we have been, if you can, you've noticed, we have moved significantly on a lot of things. We're going to need something in return for the movement we've made because there are things that we need that so far we're not seeing very much movement on. So we've made some movement on things that, you know, we felt, okay, we can give the officers these things. We think it's appropriate. Um, so I'm not saying it's a package deal, but 
you know, I can't say we're going to sign off on something, you know, one point and say we've given you this and we're going to sign off on it because you agreed to it, but over here we need this, but you're not willing to move. So that's going to determine whether we can sign off on them or not. So it's not a package. We're still negotiating, but we need, to see, we need to see some movement. It's not a package, but it is a package. We did move on a lot of things, so, but you can keep going and then we can talk about ours. Okay, so it's, it's funny because the non-contract day compensation, we had moved to 37. You kept it at 35, so we moved it back to 35, but now you're at 37. Right, and okay. when I go through my offers, I'll talk about what I also changed from other parts. Okay. Um, so the pay, the salary adjustments, you have pay increases. We don't call them pay increases. We call them salary adjustments um, in the district. So we'd want to keep that title the same in 20.5. It's, it's an adjustment to the salary more than an increase necessarily. Was that there? I'm that sorry? was the prior title? That, yeah, the prior title was salary adjustment. Okay. Okay, it looks like we have the same language there. to the next change. I think we've kind of both parties in 20.10, the Glades area supplement. I know in 20.8, I noticed you did have stuff highlighted in red. That's the language that's currently in there, so I didn't address that because that's the language we currently have in the contract. Where are you looking? In 20.8 at the beginning, you have some language here that says, you know, it's about the payroll schedules that contained in paragraphs A, B, and or C below. I have that as the current language in the contract. Okay, I think it was highlighted in one of your prior printouts. I think okay. that's why I did that. It may have been when we were talking about having other systems in place. Um, the Glades area supplement would become the West area supplement. I think both of us have it top is Glades still. It should be the title should be West area. But I think we've come to and get an agreement on that one. Then we get to the sergeants. Um, we didn't change much in our proposal um, because this is one of those that we need to see more movement on. So moving into you know, examinations and oral interviews, the 14 days, we think 45 is too much. If 14 is too little, we can certainly talk about that to come to some other resolution, but 45 is just, we feel is a little excessive. Uh, we added your language or that they would use, the district will use an examination created by the chief of police. We had talked about that before. We added your language about it. Would it, the design would be to ensure that content is job related, equitable, and non-discriminatory. The examination content should be kept confidential at all time and not shared with any applicants. So we did add that um, language. And on page 15 of our proposal, the first full bullet on that page, where we're talking about the um, the interview panel that we would agree we'll keep it as sworn department officers as you requested, but then one would be selected by PBA and all others be selected by the chief of police. And that was something we changed. I know you had here two rank and file officers of district who were randomly selected. We have a real issue with that only because if we're randomly selecting them, it could be a guy that we just hired yesterday who has just got out of the police academy, has absolutely no concept of what it takes to be a supervisor, to be a good supervisor, we're gonna put them on the interview panel. Can, can I make a suggestion to something sure. like that though? Is that could be, you'd have to meet criteria to be one of the people selected though. A non-probationary. Non-probationary, so nobody, you know, two or three years, you have to have supervisory pass or something like that. Well, I mean, I'm just throwing out suggestions. I don't know for, but where, where you, it wouldn't be just somebody just came on yesterday. So you can have, because somebody yesterday shouldn't even be volunteering for that. You want to volunteer for that, because some people don't want to be in. Uh, well, the way your language is written, it would just be a lottery. We would just pull names out of a hat of everybody who's rank and file officers and go, okay, it's going to be you and you're going to be you on the interview panel. Right, but last time we discussed yeah. making, you know, further criteria, criteria like no discipline, things yeah. like that. So I think, I think, okay, so we're, we're, 
I guess, I guess we're creating criteria for a job and then creating criteria for people to be on the interview panel. I think well, we're getting a little what, too in the weeds. That's what, that'll prevent just Joe Schmo from getting on it that shouldn't be on an interview panel. Well, what would also prevent it is we just keep the panel that we have now where we have PBA having input into one of the sworn officers on the panel. Yeah, did PBA have two officers? Like it, it, we're looking for two, right? I'm reading it. Because right now there's not a number associated with the panel. So there's no. I don't know what they've done in the past of how many officers. I'm not sure. AC wires. I haven't, I haven't really been part of the process. So I, yeah, I, I don't think say. we've we've done it in a while. The past we haven't has done been it in a while, three. and I don't think it's that large a committee. In the past, the panel's been three or four, and yeah. it's been non non school district employees. What did what did you agency. say? It's not been what. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I'm not quite sure what I said. Um, it's not been a large panel. It hasn't been a large panel, to, in, in my impression, my estimation. I haven't sat on any. Oh, okay. So I couldn't tell you for sure, but my impression is it hasn't been that large. I, I understand. Three. I've been on the panel. There's three or four. It was three. So if, if there's three or four, if there's three and you want PBA to select two, I mean, I think that's a little unreasonable. Oh, of course. I, oh, the I'm panel. At our, our thing is, was two. Ours was five. Yeah, it was five total. The We're basing it on five. And the prior panels weren't school district employees. They weren't brass from here. They were outside agencies. Right. Well, this one requires, you know, one, a sworn department command officer, one of which will be selected by the PBA and the other selected by the chief of police, and then at least one non-district law enforcement personnel. Non-district or non? non non-district law enforcement person. So just a civilian. No, it's a it's a law enforcement person. Or another. Oh, okay. So like so, outside. And who picks that one? The chief? chief. So he could pick a sworn officer from Boca or, a, you know, a, a, the chief of police for the Lake Clark Shores or for Palm Springs since we're sitting in Palm Springs right now. I don't know if we'd like that. Well, that's what the language is now. Okay. So is there any consideration to changing some of the other qualifications? Because I see that you've agree you want, you know, no record of suspension. Well, they wouldn't be included anyway. I mean, we want no formal discipline. Um, is there, you guys keep taking out the degree requirement. Is that not many people, they don't have an associate, associate's degree or at least 60 correct. hours? Correct. Okay. So we're finding, we're actually finding that in a lot. I have a position now in my own department for an EEO coordinator and it requires a, a bachelor's degree, but it's a specialist two level position. It's not that high up on this on the non bargaining unit chart. I know we've moved the specialists from the education or the experience. We're seeing that in IT as well. That there are people who are not getting the degrees, but they're getting certified. They're getting a lot of experience and they come in with a lot of wealth of knowledge, but maybe not the degree. Um, so that's one of the things that, you know, even though we're an educational institution, which is a little strange. We're finding that there are some positions for which maybe a degree isn't necessary. Maybe they need to have the experience is more important. And I think particularly in a law enforcement setting, the experience speaks volumes over whether they could sit through a course and get a degree. I am concerned with having an exam with no materials and just having it be like just like an easy thing that anyone can pass and it just being kind of for show. That's what That's I would. That's not what we have in here, the same language we had before that we're gonna give a list, where the district will provide a list of the areas that the exam will cover and also provide a list of the resources from which the examination was drawn. Okay. So it's, so we, that language is current. It's the language that we currently have. Because last time it was kind of discussed that we don't know what materials and it may just be based on job well, it is, it, there are going to be resources and materials, but it's going to be based, the questions are going to be based, like designed, which we have that language now, designed, the content is job related. So it's not necessarily going to pull from, you know, uh, an outside entity that does a, an exam for sergeants from someplace else in Florida that is not school-based. School-based, you guys have, you know, the, you have things that are a little different than regular law enforcement, you have the, some of the same things, but we want it to be job related. And what's the line supervision courses? What have those been in the, the past go around? What was that question? The line supervision courses? That's an FDLE course that's uh, offered through FDLE. You have to take, it's, uh, it's like a 
prepare you to be a supervisor, teaches you. Do you know like when's the last time they've offered that? It's offered by FDLE, it's offered at the colleges. You can take it at Indiana State River College. See, the issue we're having also is that, is that we're, we're not allowed to now to go to training off duty anymore. So, but you can't really go to training on duty because we don't have the, the people to send you. So I took the line supervision course about 10 years ago. I took it on my own time and in Indian River State College. Other officers are taking it in Palm Beach uh, actually, State think, College. I think it's easier to, to set something like that up. We actually did it, this agency did it uh, um, about 18 months ago, set something up where we sent three quarters of our class was from, from this agency. I mean, we can, as an agency, you can actually even do it, something even easier than that. You send an officer as a train the trainer. He goes, becomes an instructor in line supervision, then he doesn't have to be an outside um, thing, and he can set the course up anytime he wants to do. And then if you have to pay overtime on something like that, you're only paying the instructor, and the other ones are going on their own time. We're actually already looking at develop, based on what we've been talking about here, we're already looking to develop an in-house first line supervision course. So we're already, so that it's defined for the use in the district. But it would still have to be a FDLE certified, am I correct? It does not, no. It's not, it's, it's not a course that needs FDLE certification. Is there any other agencies in Florida that they made up their own course? There are. Do you, you know of any offhand? Well, I know when I was with Coral Gables that we did not send people out outside the agency for supervision training. But it w and if we did, it was usually for executive level. How long would that take to set up? That's going to take a long? Uh, it takes, well, a training department would be tasked with that, and they would go through and they would look at the body of work that our officers and supervisors deal with. And we'd start to pull together um, subject areas that, that would be relevant. As a matter of fact, we've got a uh, supervisory um, guide coming out shortly that has a lot of the material in it that would likely be part of a test in the future. Okay. You know, I'm, I, 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 I know we, the issue with this sergeant's thing, this whole sergeant's test, we've had this in place now for over six, seven years in the contract. The department refused to follow and, and send anybody to a sergeant's exam. For seven years, six years that we've had this in the contract, they sent nobody because it was always that I want to be able to pick and choose who my supervisors are. So we're willing to work with you on this, but um, but it's going to be it's going to be uh, it, it, the friends and family stuff is going to stop. Um, we're willing to work with it, but it's got to be something legit. It's got to be a test. It's got to be a number, and you're done. You got it. Not this. Uh, okay. Because the way this is written, it's two things. It's being fit for the people that they want already to have this position. And two, you know, the, the square peg doesn't fit in the round hole, so what, would, what we're doing now is making the hole bigger and bigger so we can fit the square peg in the hole. You know, the whole point of this, before this exam, we had uh, in the Kelly days, it was eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I like you, you're, my, you're a supervisor now. So that was the whole point of getting this into the contract. So it could be a fair process whole, for everyone. We offered to take the whole thing out, but you didn't like that. So it could be a fair process for everyone, but it's, I, I see where, I mean, so even, if, even something as FDLE qualifications for lines of, you know, tonight, you know, I don't know of any department in, in, around here in Palm Beach County um, that, that doesn't make you go to a line supervision FDLE approved course. Um, you know, talking about the district worrying about all this money that we don't have, and now you're going to put supervisors out there that are less than qualified, and you're not worried about lawsuits? I like the idea of having the course more readily available. I think that's good. I just, I would be interested in knowing who else does it that way, where it's not through FDLE. Um, would, but it be that just, would it be that difficult to get somebody trained a trainer? No, I, I'm not saying we couldn't look into it. Because I think that would solve that one issue right there off the bat if the, one of our officers <laughs> went out and got FDLA I'm not saying certified. we couldn't look into it. I'm just saying that right now, based on what we've been talking about, is being able to provide a regular opportunity to take a course like that when you get promoted. That was one of the big concerns is, will people be able to take a course when they're getting, not promoted, when they're getting a the special assignment? So that's all we're trying to do is figure out how we're going to meet expectations that we're setting here at the table. 
Right. Absolutely, and I, and I think there's other options that, that, and I'm just throwing this out there, there's nothing in stone that you, for, for college degrees, you can have the CIEUs that they use for the, the step plan, um, not step plan, the uh, um, ladder. career ladder plan. You can use military instead of, of, of college. There's, there's a whole lot of other options out there. We, we just think that you need to, like Alex is saying, that you just don't want to, you don't want to dummy down the position. Well, that's, that's not really the intent. And I, and I don't, I'm not saying that's the intent, but when we start taking things away from it, I mean, I can see things making things more broader so it makes it open more to people. I, you're talking to a guy who, who has no college, has a few college classes, but I got military. I think that's just as important as college. I think that would probably solve a lot of our problems here too. You can use that instead. There's a whole lot of options out there that we'd be willing to but I, I do agree, we don't want to lessen the position. And I, I think that's from, and we talked about that when we were talking in the, in the master police officer. That's why we didn't want to lessen the position. We wanted, there was more qualifications for the master police officer than there was for the sergeant. So I think that's what we're getting at. It's not that we don't want to work with you and make it, um, e or I shouldn't say easier, but a fair game for everybody and everybody has the same opportunities. I understand. I mean, one of the things, Alex, I want to just make sure I understood, because you seemed to, something you said, and maybe I heard it wrong, with, like they, they get their number and they're done. They get the position. Is that what you mean? Like, like if you take the exam and you, you, you qualify, pass this, you, you meet qualify, all the qualifications. You get the, you, you, I'll explain it to you if you want. Okay. You have a criteria. It's open to, it's open to the public. New York City Police Department's been doing it for years. You have an, ex you have, you put out the material. The, who's ever interested and meets that criteria, whether it be uh, five years on a job or four years on a job, you need a certain amount of college credits or, or equivalent to, or if you're military, we'll give you, we'll give you an exemption on either co the college credits, 30, 30 college credits or something else, or the years of experience because you're gonna, we're gonna give veterans a preference, which they deserve. They serve the country, they should get some extra time. Um, now you take an exam, you get a, two people take the exam. Mike takes it, he scores 100, I, I score 99. Mike gets number one on the list, I'm number two on the list. If you need so supervisors to hire, a sergeant, you have to hire number one first. Okay. He got a higher score. I just want to make sure, because when you said it the first time, it seemed like, well, if, if you got 100, he got 99, you both get, you're both sergeants now. No, no. Okay. You, you hire, yeah. you need three positions filled. You had five people take the exam. One got 100, 99, 98, 97. You hire in that order. The person that got the 100 first, the second person who got the 99, and it's a promotional exam. It would be, it would be a promotional exam at this point if it's, if it's, if it's um, presented from this side. But it would be a promotional exam, and it would be a five thousand dollar bump in salary into that position. No more of the supplement where you know we're going to take that's the supplement. Not, we're that's give, not what we're we're dealing with well, here. I'm, we're not I'm, dealing with making it a rank and making a promotion. We can't. We we're can't this is that. negotiation. That's why we're you know. Right. That's what you're asking for. But you're asking for us to create a job. I you're think it's asking already for us a to rank. create a. It's not a creation. A it's rank. already there. It's already a rank. It's already instead of no, instead of having no, it's, a. No, it's it's actually for the district. It's creating a position. Well, because we just created right lieutenants. We, hold on. It, right now, it's treated as a supplement. We can give those. There's a whole different process to creating a position. We have to have a job description. It has to go to the board. The board has to approve it. It has to go through all that process. It's not something we can do in negotiations. Okay. It has to be done by the board. We can't, we can't create jobs here. Okay. It, is a, it is a rank, though. So it is, it's not a rank in this district. So keeping it is a it the special same, duty assignment. Under keep, the general orders and the way they speak of it, it is a rank. But. Keeping it the same way in the contract, whatever, however you have it classified in the district, instead of keeping, instead of giving them the supplement as a, on a side, to put it in the actual salary, to build it into the actual salary, that that would be something you have to go to the board also. Yes, because it's going to have to be a different position. Because all our, our, if you go on PeopleSoft, the positions are tied to certain, certain, rank, you know, min maxes, and it, it, we have to create a position. So, so I'm we, not sure we could do. We, we could just sit here and say, okay, we're going to make it a rank. We can't. Okay, so can't we do that. It so also takes away a lot of the flexibility that the chief has that I'm not sure he's willing to give up. Well, do you need the supervisors, or do you need to to, to appoint the people that you want? Well, now, now it's where we're getting that's, at. That's not what we're talking about, though, because there's other ways to get supervisors besides sergeants. 
Okay, but I'm, like I said, if we're dying need for supervisors, it's, it's for the safety of the department, it's for the safety of the officers, it's for the safety of the children, but we still want to control the control the control to the point where we're not going to get what we want, then I, th I think it's becoming more of a... Right, we'll have to talk about right. it. Hold on but a second, I just want to make sure I'm clear. Is that what PBA's proposal is now? It's not what you gave me, but that you want it to be ranked. Did we propose it? No, I mean, you're okay. mentioning it here at the table. That's I was, why I just It was ideas sure. coming out of my mind. What the board okay. needs to do for, I don't, we haven't discussed yeah. that, so. Right, so but I, there, it already is a rank when you read the general orders and they're designated rank as a supervisor. So. Is there any flexibility on the number of days? Because you have 45, we have 14. 45 is really only like six weeks, which anywhere I wouldn't think that it is even that long of a period of time, but I will have to speak to the reps because two weeks is too short. I wouldn't think that six weeks would be that long when you have to study and take a promotional exam. Well, but. hopefully the thing, the, what we would hope is that the people who are taking the exam already know this information because it's part of their job. So they're already fully aware so then the materials don't really matter then? The materials do matter because the officers would have access to them and have it, and that's what the test is drawn from. But it, the plan is for it to be related to the work they're actually doing and not to something else. Right. I would hope it would be related. Okay. And, and just something that maybe we need to talk about so it doesn't, we don't forget it in the whole thing, no matter how we go on this. Shouldn't we put something on that two together as is, say we're doing a, a, a the test is 80%, the inter oral interview is 20%. I mean, we need to also make sure we get that, all of that stuff clarified too. Okay, that's, that's stuff we'll have to talk more about based on, on what we were given today. All right. So going into the definition section, that's all we really have left. Well, oh, and I wanted to ask, the Bencore thing was taken off. So I don't really, the terminal leave in Bencore, I think that's what it was. I think it was under yeah, 20, 20 before. One, two. It's still there. Is it not in my proposal? No. So the, okay, that must have just been cut off. No, we're, we're keeping it. I don't know why that would have been. I may just have hit delete. We were not intending to delete the terminal pay, so that should be back in there. Okay. I did we maybe we signed did we sign off on that or no? Was it moved okay. to another we, article? I don't even think or? we talked about it. I don't think yeah, we Yeah, I don't think it. we I think talked we, about it. You know, That's we'll like, have to look at that because maybe we now that I'm thinking about it, maybe did we move is this what we moved over into the leave provisions? I or we'll look and see what happened. It was not our intent for that to disappear, so that still something we want to have. Okay. We'll okay. figure out where that went to. I don't remember moving that one, but I don't remember Maybe we did. I'll have to go figure out what happened. Um, in the definition, so you just changed the uh, spacing. Right, and for day, um, we have in there B, we had non-contract day, we just added or as designated on the school police calendar. <clears throat> for non-contract days because they do have that on there um, or they used to have that on there. Um, and then C, we left, we gave you what you were asking for and C, we really liked when you took off that first top, it made more sense to us, but we will um, leave that there. Um, so I think we, we have agreement on the definition section now. And you just added extra ones regarding perk and things like that. Oh, that was there. Okay. Oh, that was there. Um, association, we, you had asked for, or the PBA, meaning, you know, the bargaining unit, so we put that there. Okay. Um, your work comp, you know, we took that back to our risk management who, who handles the work comp for the district. They, one of the problems they have is for officers that provision you had with a, allowing them to use their sick leave to get to the 100%. We have no system that can manage that. They can figure out, okay, they need three days of their sick leave to get them to 100%. We don't have a way of doing that. And the other piece, if they're non -paid, unpaid status from the district, they're basically, it's kind of like a switch off on PeopleSoft. So if they're in an unpaid status as work comp and it's off, we can't then turn it back on to give them sick pay. 
they'd have we'd have to have some mechanism in PeopleSoft to do that. We don't. It would be a require a reprogramming of that, and they are very um, hesitant to do any reprogramming of PeopleSoft at all. So. And then for the other provision, our risk management department said that they just can't do what you're asking them to do. They can't do the sick leave part manually? No, they cannot. Okay, I think we'll probably have to caucus. Okay. Um, where are we supposed to end at 4? 4.30, okay. I think. Or no, 4 o'clock. Yes, we have an hour. Okay. Okay, we'll step out. Okay. guys coming back with some movement on that and we just thought that the 260 regularly scheduled duty days would be a little bit confusing so we thought maybe we could just put 14 months instead of the duty days because I just think I think that it would be a little bit confusing too for me and maybe for you all doing the counting on that so that would be our counter to that the 14 months and then for Article 17, um, so properly documented, we added that C, um, annual reoccurring maximum of 24 hours. We are fine with keeping that language of the annual reoccurring. <clears throat> Such hours are not limited to code 9004 and may not be earned for work performed under a lease. That was fine. That was in my proposals as well. Um, so, and then thank you for adding reasonable. And then I thought that for my proposal, I had that extra language of subject to the requirements to submit such requests seven calendar days in advance. So I thought we could leave that. Um, D, we were fine with your proposal for D. And then E, um, I think that we just have an issue with the quarterly language. We just wanted to take out that first sentence. Well, oh, hold on a second, because I, I believe that that was, well, I'll have to go back and look because I thought you guys had proposed quarterly, but maybe we did. I'll have to go back and look. Okay. Yeah, we didn't. <clears throat> so um, we, I just took out the prior language that was prior to May 15th. I didn't propose the quarterly. So um, it wouldn't have. So I just thought we could take out the first sentence of E and the last sentence and just leave it as all comp time must be approved <laughs> by the chief or designee. And then F. Um, You're going to have to go a little bit slower so we, as we're yeah. trying to take notes. Sure, <laughs> sorry. Okay. So basically, just leave the middle sentence for E. <clears throat> okay. F. Um, comp time may not be scheduled or utilized on any day when training is scheduled to take place without prior written approval from the chief of police. We are fine with that. Um, G, I think we're fine with your G as written, except I think that there was a concern with the training. So we wanted clarification on what type of training that would include, because um, I think we were thinking that maybe members would only want it to be um, like high liability training that's mandatory. So I think that we needed a little bit more clarification on that but we were fine with the holiday and the days immediately before or after the breaks. Okay, let me- The exception that you offered too. And the, yeah, the one through four. Okay, I'll see what I can get from the chief on the types of training. Okay. And is a high liability, that's the, the man, state mandatory training is what it's called. Okay. And then 17.3, um, we were fine with how you wrote that and to take out the definition of 72 hours. Seventeen point four, I think that's that's status quo. Seventeen point five, we would get rid of seventeen point five for the on call status. But you're gonna leave the current seventeen point five, that's that if they get called back to work prior to the start of their next schedule, they get the three hours pay, you're keeping that, right? That's just <coughs> from the original contract? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then 17.6, um, that was just grammatical, that's fine. Right.
So 17.10, um, we're fine with the order. I think we're fine with the, um, with the call out language as well, right? We're fine with that, yeah. So 17.10 looks good to us. And then, let's see. 17.12, um, I think, again, we're gonna have to flesh that out a little more because we do want them to have some kind of recourse. So that was our, our main you know, sticking point for Article 17, I think. We just need some kind of actual resolution for the guys who, who have that issue. Okay. And then 17.15, um, I think we have the same language, so that's fine. All right, it seems like we're pretty close on 17. Yeah. Okay, good. And then Article 20, um, I think we're gonna have to discuss more amongst ourselves. Um, I wanted to speak with the canine guys more to see what they're thinking. Um, I think we would be fine getting rid of the firearm and DT trainer so we don't single them out. Um, but as far as the canine, I need more time to speak with the membership, so. Salary adjustments, that's fine with the title. So the payroll schedule, I think we had, you said that was the same language, that was just. I mean, that's all status quo. Yeah, <laughs> West Area Supplement, that's all good. 20.11, again, I think I'm gonna have to speak with the membership more. Um, we wanted to work more on language, doing things that we discussed with maybe having, instead of, I don't know, the associate degree or something like that, having different require, requirements like military or CEUs or things like that. Um, I think we're gonna have to talk more about the line supervision course alternative. I think that they wanted it to be FDLE approved and. Um, so I'll have to speak with the guys about that. Um, I still think that 14 days is a little too short. I think the guys agree, and um, but we were thinking maybe 30 days would be a good, you know, middle point. Okay. And then um, the interview process, I think um, we're gonna have to talk more about that, do an actual number. Um, and I think I'm just gonna have to speak to membership more about that. And, and just on the, just note so that maybe you can think about it is, is I think what we're thinking about is when the, how many people are gonna be on the panel. Okay. Type thing, so it'll make it easier, a, a definitive number. Understood. <clears throat> and then um, if we do keep our, our, you know, random selection proposal, we will flesh that out more. So, but again, I'll have to speak to them more about all this. And then terminal leave in Bencore, you said that that was. Yeah, that should have been in the same. proposal. Okay. And then definitions, I think that we're good on all that, so. Okay. Well, I appreciate, you know, all the work. I feel like we've done more today than we've done probably in the last three or four sessions. So. Um, I'll get back to you about the 17th is now. I know that your officer said they couldn't do the 17th. Um, so we're going to go back and see if we can find another date okay. relatively quickly. Probably won't be next week, but it'll be the week after. Okay, and that'll give me a chance anyway to speak to everybody. Okay. Um, did you guys want to TA the definition section? Yeah, she just handed okay. it to me. Hold on, we've got these. Hold on. Let's see. Okay, pull that out of this right here. Well, I appreciate it. I'm gonna let the, if we're done, we're just signing these, we can let the tech guys get out of here since they're on OT already. Okay. I appreciate, right. I appreciate you guys coming to the table and getting some of this stuff done today. Thank okay. you. One You're quick welcome. question, the 30, uh, the non-contract rate that was 35 and then was 37 and then went, which, was that back to 37? Where was that? Uh, she mentioned oh. it. I don't think we caucused about that. All so. right. I didn't but see we're gonna come back with new proposals next time anyway, so. I don't know where that is exactly right now, so.
And I think that'll just depend on where we are with canine when we come back okay. here. So. Sounds good. All right, again, thank you very much and appreciate it. We'll get back to you with some dates. Okay, thank Thanks. you.